Thank you. So I am John. This is the popover API. So let's get popping. All right. So there are two parts to an HTML popover. There's the. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. Um, oh, someone's trying to troll me through my slides. Oh, well, great. Okay. So the popover API, um, you, uh, you, it, two parts, you got the popover itself. You can use a div, you can use pretty much any element, give it an ID and then the popover attribute. Um, and then we have the trigger, which is usually a button or an input and not usually it is a button or an input and use the popover target attribute with that to, um, with the ID of the popover set to popover target. And that gives you a popover. So this is all built into HTML, no JavaScript, no CSS even, this is all uh, HTML. So you can do pop that, or you can do the input. Oh, that's worrisome. Oh, that wasn't supposed to be public. Okay, um, so th there's also, um, when you do popover, you can do manual or auto. So if you just use the attribute, then it, um, it's an auto or you can set it to auto It has something called light dismiss meaning if you click on the pop pop up, you can click anywhere else on the screen and it will close if you open up any other pop ups, it will close or you can use the manual, which will. Um, <coughs> will not close unless you hit the correct button, so I can even open up the the auto pop over it doesn't change, but until I hit the button. Okay. So. Now you also um, can separate the hide and show. So I swear I've showered this year, not this month, but this year. Um, you can separate the show and hide. So the popover target action allows you to, to differentiate those. So you can show what's painful about this. <laughs> Sorry, that is painful. Um, so you can hit show or you can, um, and then it won't close unless you hit the hide button. Uh, you also have a backdrop uh, pseudo element built right in, and this covers the entire screen. You have a, um, here I'm just do, setting a, a partially see-through uh, black color and a backdrop filter, so I can hit this, and then automatically covers the entire screen um, and can handle everything. It also apparently allows for background images. Um, there's no restrictions on the backdrop element um, like there is with like selection or something. Backdrop pseudo element, I should say. All right. And you also get a, a, a built-in pseudo class popover open. So this will handle any um, any open popovers. You can you can access it. All right. You also get two events. One is before toggle, which of course happens, you guessed it, before toggling. Um, and the toggle event, which is also the toggle event for the details element. And that happens after toggle. You got All right. You also get uh, properties built in. So these are the, um, the attributes pop over. Nothing wrong with that, even if your wife thinks so. <laughs> um, so we have the popover attribute, popover target element instead of popover target. I don't know why they changed it. Um, you also get popover target action. Uh, with methods, you can hide or show or toggle the popover. Um, for me, the, I kept thinking that this should go on the button, but it actually goes on the popover itself. All right, and then accessibility. <laughs> Um, accessibility wise, um, there are a number of things that the browsers do for you. I am not an accessibility expert, but what it's going to do um, is going to expose an area expanded on the trigger button. It'll create an area details relationship between trigger and popover. Um, if they aren't in the code, um, it'll add a group aria role to the popover. If you're using a div or something that doesn't have um, the role, it will add that. It also return focus after you close the popover trigger and put the popover in tab order after the trigger. Um, notably, Chrome, Edge, and Firefox do all of these. Safari is lagging behind a little bit with 
uh, doing just one, four, and five. All right, and that is the end here. I have slides. So the regular slides um, are at the top there. The extra pop slides with my embarrassing things are in the middle. And then if you want to go directly to the reference slide, you can also do that here. Um, learning more, the, the MDN article is really good. It has a lot of information. Um, I also wrote a CSS tricks article that just published last week called Pop Over the Balloons, which is an HTML and CSS game built on the Pop Over API. If you want more about the accessibility, which I sort of summarized here, um, it's, it's at that link. And um, if you like my sense of humor, I have silly zombie themed web development books and games. And feel free to contact me if you have questions or anything else. Thank you.